you know what what I've learned from my husband is that it's not how you how much you earn but it's just how you save back to my channel if you are new to my channel please don't forget to subscribe turn on that notification bell for you to get updated for all my future uploads by the way my name is raymond your pinoy nurse here in Ireland. okay guys so this is another episode of our series nurse in action where you know, we put the spotlight on our nurses here in ireland to give you an idea how is it working here especially in their respective departments or you so today guys we are so fortunate to be joined by one of my co-workers and we are going to talk about high dependency unit nursing. So without further ado, let's meet her now. Okay guys, as I mentioned earlier, we're going to talk about high dependency unit nursing and I am joined by none other than Tasha Claveria. Hi Tash! Hi everyone! Hi Mon, how are you? Not too bad. Si Tash guys is uh, my co-worker. Okay, hindi na namin babanggitin kung saan kami nagtatrabaho. Uh-huh. It's for you to find out. Okay? <laughs> Kasi yung high dependency Tash, this is really like new to most of the nurses, yeah. especially kung galing sila ng Pilipinas. Kasi hindi naman tayo, wala na tayong high dependency, no? Yeah, Maybe in have, other hospital, yeah. probably. Pero ako, nung nag-Saudi lang ako, saka ko lang siya nalaman, oh, may high dependency pala. Ako anyway, din, hindi ko din alam. Diba? No. Yeah. Anyway, Tash, um, can you give us a brief introduction about yourself? I came here here from Ireland uh, since uh, 2017 but prior to that I had my ICU um, experience back in the Philippines for three years and my medical surgical um, experience award in the Philippines then um, for two years in 2017 I started applying for actually kasi parang nagmamadali ako parang I cannot wait so I applied for a nursing home but I finished my contract for two years and then I decided to transfer um, in a hospital when I applied sa isang hospital um na deploy ako sa ang tawag sa, sa sa ward but I really don't like to work in the ward during that time kasi parang sayang naman yung ICU here in small Spirit. so I applied to this I applied to our hospital and then I was deployed in you know in the inten- in the high dependency unit so mm-hmm. from there yun na you're like you're thinking diba yung critical care nung gagawin mo sa pasyente ganun parang doon kasi sa, sa sa nursing home you mm-hmm. parang routine na siya so yeah. yun Yeah. Tsaka, I was working in a private hospital during that, a uh, private nursing home. So, iba kapag HSC, di ba? Parang maganda yung benefits. So, that's also one of the reasons that I wanted to apply in a, you know, HSC hospital. Yeah. Is this your first time to go out or to work out of the Philippines? Yeah, actually, this wow. is the first time. Never, I mean, nag-apply ako ng Saudi, but I don't know, baka iba yung plano ni Lord sa akin. So, yes. yeah, and then there, from from there, I mean, I've learned, I mean, I, I took the IELTS exam. But of course, you need to gain more experience. When you come here in Ireland, it's like you're back to square one, diba? Kasi everything is, yeah. is different talaga. So, yeah. The here. difference na sinasabi mo, yan ang pag-uusapan natin. Especially oh, okay. sure. this topic or this unit, high dependency. Kasi dependency as unit. I mentioned earlier, this is like very new to everybody, to most of the people or most of the nurses. So now, let's talk about high dependency. Paano ba yung typical day ng isang HD nurse. Basically, um, high dependency is located close sa ICU unit. Uh, yeah, they were calling it step down in which na it's like you're handling patients na extensive care sa patients, not in the normal ward, but not as intense as in the ICU unit. Most of us, di ba, parang we're handling uh, one to two patients. That's our max. Usually in the morning, of course, you had you have your handover. And then, of course, you're assigned to your certain patient. So after the handover, of course, you check your vital signs. Kano kano? Of course, prior to that, meron tayong tinatawag na audit, di ba? Yun sa atin. Mm-hmm. You'll be checking for if meron bang naka-NG yung pasyente mo, if they have any pacemaker, your um, suction apparatus, uh, monitoring equipment. If your patient is post-op, of course, you will check if there is any uh, drainage. Most likely, since you know, now we're... Um, having COVID patients na. So most of them, they are on high flow or I'm not going into technicalities about these equipments that we have in HDU, but we have those high flow na kaniti ba yung pasyente mo or if they are attached to um, ventilators. So most likely, of course, you need to check if correct ba yung setup na naka, yes. na in order ng doctor prior sa, sa equipment na nandun and then check mo yung settings. So basically, we are just double-checking kung ano yung mga nakakonect sa pasyente. Mm-hmm, nakakonect and of course, yung mga vital signs, 
you know, all the assessment from head to toe, we are doing that. You're very yeah. right about that. And regarding sa allocation, you mentioned earlier na once to two. Sino ba nag-allocate usually? Tayo ba may, may senior nurse lang or charge nurse, CNM1 or two? Can you just explain it to them? Of course, it's our CNM2 is going to assign the patients uh, to us. If yung pasyente mo naka-tracky, naka-nippy, or they need um, oxygenation, mostly one one nurse lang yan. Baka tinatriage din naman nila ng mga CNM kung sino yung bibigay sa'yo. Pero yung right. parang mga chill lang naman, mga hindi masyadong chill. toxic. <laughs> they could yeah. give you at least uh, two patients. Yeah. So yung high dependency natin, ilang bed ba yun? Ilang beds? Uh, 16 beds 16. Uh, siya. Yeah. To let them know how many staff usually ang nag, nag ang duty including the CNM. Most tayo parang at least in the morning, syempre dahil medyo mandaming procedures, so we need to sit out or somehow mobilize the patient. At least say 13 13 uh, staffs in the morning and then 12 at night. So we're very thankful sa mga search nurses na, you know, naka-assign ngayon sa, sa HDU na. We're really, really thankful. We, are, we really appreciate everything that they did for us. Kapag toxic na ha, at least dalawa yung float. At least may floater yung sa COVID tsaka floater yung dun sa mga clean cases. Yeah, that's correct. And it only means na yung support system din ay available yeah. readily sa ating mga staff. And we mentioned earlier that uh, high dependency is a step down of ICU. And what are the cases usually that you handle personally? So mostly uh, those patients who are, you know, septic, nagka-sepsis na sila from ward na kailangan uh, extensive na yung mga antibiotics na kailangan nila. Minsan, they need, uh, you know, norad infusion, type 2, and then type 1 respiratory failure. Host of patients, naging complicated yung, uh, yung surgery nila and they need uh, close monitoring. So, yun, dun, dun pinupunta sa HDU. This high dependency really looks like ICU setting then. ICU setting then. Yeah. Then. For- The, the only difference I can say is that we are not really dealing with the ventilator, ventilator in, in yeah. general. You know, the, the mm-hmm. complex settings. Tash, na mention natin kanina about dun sa mga different cases, di ba? And for, mm-hmm. for this one, of course, we don't know all the cases. How do you deal with with that? For example, bago sa yung kaso. Of course, we have our computers naman, di ba? In every room, we have our computers. Sometimes, of course, if you're not really familiar with that one, of course, you need to research naman. But we also have our facilitators in every area naman in the hospital. We have facilitators to assist us. If we have any queries, may mga questions ka ba if you're not familiar with this certain type of, 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 of what you call that, of case or this certain type of drainage, nandun naman sila to help. So, of course, approachable naman yung mga CNMs natin, tsaka yung mga doctor naman natin na nandun talaga sa, sa HDU. They're quite uh, approachable naman in, in, you know, in explaining to you if you know regarding the case of the patients. I usually research at the same time if I really don't know. Syempre, of course, we all, you know, we're open for mistakes yeah. naman. So, mm-hmm. You need to ask your senior nurses, your CNM, and then your facilitator. They're also there to help you if hmm. you have any. Just to let you know, guys, our duty in, in the high dependency is 12 hours. In the morning, yes. our, our shift starts around half seven and it will end eight o'clock. Dun sa 12 hours natin, Tash, syempre hindi lang naman po vital signs. What are the other things that we do? In the morning, yeah, after you did your endorsement, nag-check ka na ng mga audit mo, check mo na yung lahat ng, ng head-to-toe assessment mo sa patient. Mo, of course, after you give your medications, Um, at around 10 o'clock, we usually sit out our patient with the help of the physio, but it would surely depend on the case of the patient. Yes. Say, for example, for those patients na naka-NORAD, hindi naman natin sila pinapa-upo uh, or yeah. oh yeah, sinisit out or we ambulate them because that will surely lower down their blood pressure. We have to ambulate post-op patients. We encourage that one at least to expand naman their lungs you know, for better oxygenation. Hindi mga procedures din naman kapag yun, kapag natutoxic ka na, Merong around those time, talagang you need to uh, go down sa IR or sa the CT scan to yeah to do um certain yes. um procedures. diagnostics yeah and procedures to your patient. So for since one is to one, if your patient is you know uh, post op sa they're quite weak, of course you're the one who will help them you know feed your your patients as well. Everything talaga hands on kami from cleaning, turning the patient, from feeding them, from ambulating them talagang all of their activities of daily living, they really need assistance uh, of us uh, nurses. After their lunch, of course, the same naman, the same as well, um, you need to sit out or somehow mm-hmm. ambulate uh, your patients. And of course, we are receiving help from the healthcare assistants as well. Yes, We're very and the physio. Yeah, and the physio. And we are mentioning about all of this 
So we call this uh, MDT, di ba? Multidisciplinary. Mm, multidisciplinary. Team. So sino-sino yeah. ba yung mga nakita mo ng MDT members or team members sa unit natin? Of course, besides from the nurses and the doctors, we also have our pharmacists. They would surely check mga medications ng patients which are not available, which are needs to be ordered, not to hear that they are not available in the hospital, that they need to order from outside. They would, I have also noticed na hindi naman ako familiar to some, to some of the medications in which, remember mo mo, may mga pasyente tayo na if they have NG, they we usually stop before we give this certain medication two yeah. hours or one hour before. So that's very good. At least we have, I've learned that from our pharmacist. We also have our dietitians. They're also uh, somehow checking kung ano yung feed ng pasyente. They would categorize it if, you know, uh, depending naman sa electrolytes, kung may mga low-volume electrolytes, they needed more protein since post-ops. We also have our physio in which they would really help us in somehow ambulating patients. We have... I, I'm not really familiar with this one. You know, yung SLP, speech language therapist. We don't have that one in back in the Philippines. Especially, di ba, kapag uh, stroke yung mga pasyente natin, may mga problems yung mga dif- dysphagia, they're having difficulty of swallowing. Right. So, we refer that one to our SLP. We refer them also sa SLP kapag kailangan nila ng speaking valve. Speaking valve if, you yes. know, we're trialing them, we, we need to refer them sa pain team. So, we also have the, our nurse uh, sa pain team. If in pain yung pasyente, yung post-op, um, post op yung pasyente natin and then they're really somehow having difficulty in controlling their pain, we refer them as well sa pain team. So exactly. talagang multidisciplinary talaga ang HDU. Not also, probably in the world also they have that. In more complex cases we have our stoma nurse. Yes, yeah, stoma nurse. May mga ganyan din tayo. And uh, for example, the patient has um, bed sores. We have the TVN. Yeah. Marami, marami, yeah. marami kang mga kasalumuhang mga different. Yeah. <laughs> diba? Special, specialization sa... Not only oh. in high dependence, but in, in the hospital. In the hospital, Ireland, talaga. In oh, oh. Uh, by the way, guys, just to let you know, wala kami respiratory therapist dito. Alam mo, yan yung una yeah. kong binanap when I, when I came oh, here. Oh. <laughs> sa Saudi Arabia, even sa Pilipinas, may respiratory therapist tayo. But here, mm-hmm. guys, all the nurses are doing that. We nurses yeah. are doing that. Especially, nasabi ni Tash kanina na we are dealing with ventilators. But for those mga high flow, um, mga CPAP, mga ganun settings. Mm, ganun we are settings. the one doing that. Sa routine namin that every four hourly or unless toxic yung pasyente mo na talagang um, hypoxic siya, we are also checking ABG. Material blood gas, here we're checking it every four hourly or every two hourly if really needed ng pasyente. We have art lines, uh, we have CVP as well sa Pilipinas iba yung CVP para yes. meron ka pang mini measure measure pero doon talaga naka ano na sa monitor namin so makikita mo na talaga so sinabi mo na rin yan yung mga naka-attach sa pasyente for example mm-hmm. or i-describe lang natin sa kanila for example you have a very sick patient ano yung mga usual contraptions na nakikita natin so you mentioned already the art line you have the art central line, line. Central so kung post up you will be able to see some drains di ba mga rubbish drains, drains. Yeah. may mga ready vac drains ready vac drains, yeah. drains you will be able Usually, to see epidural catheter epidural catheters yes. uh-huh. yan sa mga pasyente na post op vac dressing uh, yeah meron tayong mga vac dressing yan yes. basically like step down icu patients or icu mm-hmm. cases slightly critical patients no yung mga pasyente natin naka-hook sa mga, sa monitor Diba? Mm-hmm. And uh, ano ba yung mga makikita natin sa monitor? Cardiac rate ng pasyente. I mean, heart rate ng pasyente. And then, yung art line, usually nakakonect na yun sa, uh, sa monitor. Also, yung SPO2 niya, yung oxygenation ng pasyente. And, but in rare cases as well, especially yung mga pasyente na nakatracky in which you need to monitor yung CO2 nila, yung and carbon dioxide. Yeah. 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 So, we're also measuring that. And this is the, the thing that I always ask. Yung documentation natin. So, kasi alam mo naman, di ba? Ang documentation yeah. na tayo sa maramihang sulat. So, explain sulat, to yeah. us, paano ba tayo nagdo-document sa high dependency? In our hospital, yeah. we are not generalized yeah, every in general. hospital. Sa amin, meron silang uh, tawag software in which na it's only for ICU and then HDU nurses. From there, we have our documentation in which you write, you know, in ICU kasi parang they're very much detailed. Sa amin, detailed din naman, but not to the extent na yung mga ano hindi mo naman kailangan i-apply yung lagi important things lang so specific person specific yeah ng, ng body no especially you you will be able to do this kasi nga at least once to two lang naman tayo eh otherwise hmm. kung yung turnover mabilis talaga you will discharge the patient you will admit one yeah. you will discharge yeah. and admit one so but anyway you really have a time to 
to chart. Mm-mm. So what's a good yeah. thing about this is computerized. Computerized. Diba? It's a very good software talaga na para incorporate sa computer na para it could really help us. I, I don't know with other hospital, no? Pero baka yeah. they're using the same uh, or maybe a different software. A different software, system, yeah. System, yeah. Then, no? And uh, once you click in an hour, you know, the vital signs will come out dun sa work folder mo eh. Yung yes. Pinaka, ano mo, diba? Documentation. Which is Mm-mm. really good. Diba? Which is really good. And all the lab results will also results come were there. Again. The gases will come in there. The notes of the doctors will come notes there. The, doctors, the medication yeah, you mentioned everything. earlier, it's really good as well. Because we don't have any of that. Well, kapag Meron, oh, wala wala kami pasyente, cardex, no? No? Wala cardex, <laughs> correct. Mm-hmm. Unless pa labas na yung pasyente or bago sa thing ng high dependency mm-hmm. from the work. So, there are yeah. co-workers from other places. So, how do you deal with them? Actually, this is what they were saying. That you know, culture is relative. Kung maga iba naman yung right or wrong sa kanila sa atin, iba din yung right or wrong. So, yun lang. Talagang you have to be. Um, respectful towards you know other people somehow teamwork lang talaga to, uh, towards your your fellow nurses so of course marami ka ring adjustments na ginawa of course of here, course 2017 friend. so ano na ba yung mga adjustments mo actually they were saying that you know shopping is really a good therapy that's what they were saying for not to the point naman of course you need to save naman so yeah shopping really is a good therapy if you're living alone naman talaga somehow you know gloomy yung weather most of the time it's wet and yeah and it's cold so of course you need to go out kasi kapag nagsistay ka lang most of the time sa bahay para kang talagang mahuhomesick ka exactly so yun uh, working here in in Ireland syempre marami ka ring differences na nakita so can you just name yes. like three differences in working here and working in the Philippines aside from the salary in terms of workload us kasi in high dependency unit yeah we have maximum of, of of two patients in the ward uh, i would ask my friends they have maximum of one nurse and then six patients it's like more talaga sa quality of nursing care that you're giving to your yes. uh, to your to your patients working here for almost 4 years now how did Ireland mm-hmm. change your life so far so uh, as i can see your husband is there with you now so ano mm-hmm. pa napago sa iyo you mama na ba si nurse tasha ay hindi na grabe ka na <laughs> you know what what i've learned from my husband is that it's not how you, how much you earn, but it's just how you save. Depends, naman, on your lifestyle. Eh. If you're, if you're, yeah, yeah, yeah. Of course, we're we're earning well here compared to back in the Philippines. But yung sa akin lang is yun very very big yung natulong ng art ng working here in Ireland in terms of right. money. Yeah. At the same time, it it taught me to be mature in ways na I'm always buying for my own whims and caprices. I've become very um, impulsive in terms of buying. But now, it's like dito kasi yung mga tao, they're laid back talaga, di ba? And then you could really s- somehow meet people that you you barely know, but they will greet you. They would say, how are you? Good morning. Ganun. How are you? Parang ganun. So uh-huh. really, it's 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 a good um, experience, kumbaga. Our land, it has, you know, it has... A plethora of, of experience that you could gain, like from history, from their culture, from their charming pubs, everything. Talaga, it's yeah, it's exactly. it's, it's nice, really. Tash, thank you so much for your time, and probably this thank will be you. my last question. What are your tips and advices for your for our subscribers, especially for aspiring nurses? Don't give up on your dreams. Yun lang kasi, kasi from my experience, kasi parang it's been uh, I've been through a lot before coming in here. So yun lang, don't give up. Always pray lang kay Lord. Even though that if you feel like you're down in the bumps, but that is just only temporary, uh, your time will come. You will have your breakthrough. Next thing is, don't let anyone, you know, dull your passions. Because some, some people would say na, ay, yan, ay, yan yung plan, plan mo, yan yung dream mo. But no, don't let, don't let anyone dull, dull your passions. And don't be apolog- uh, apologetic regarding that one. Yes, you know? exactly. And as I always say, alam mo, uh, work in silence and then let yeah. your success be the noise, you know, or make the yeah, noise. You're right. Then, you're yeah, right. Uh, well, Tash, thank you so much. Huh? Thank you so thank much. Thank you so time. much. I really appreciate this and I'm sure most of our subscribers, all of them, uh, learned a lot from High Dependency Unit Nursing. Thank you so much sure. for your thank time. You so I really much. appreciate Nurse it. Nurse Raymond, you deserve an encore. Thank you so much. <laughs> thank you so much. <laughs> and once again, guys, if you haven't subscribed yet, please do so. And don't forget to follow my Facebook page, Nurse Raymond123. Until our next episode, bye, guys. Thank you.